The hardware requirements for SQL Server 2005 are not surprising. They're pretty straightforward, so let's take a look at those. You just need to be aware of them. First of all, with the processor, you're going to need, well, let's talk first of all. Microsoft publishes requirements and recommendations. Requirements is what you got to have. It's not the way you want to live your life, okay? But these are stated, and if any of you guys are going to take the uh, certification exams, you need to be aware of these numbers. If you're not going to take a certification exam, go to sleep for a second here. Processor requirement is 600 megahertz or higher. You certainly don't want to put SQL Server on that kind of machine. If you're trying to learn it at home, not a problem. Go for it. Recommended in a production environment, 1 gigahertz or higher. Obviously, the higher you go over 1 gigahertz, the better the service that you're going to get from your server. On the memory, this is kind of interesting. If you're running Enterprise or Developer Editions, the requirement that you must have on the machine is 256 megabytes. Now, these stated amounts are for SQL Server only and not for the rest of the operating system. So if your machine has 256 megabytes, you may have some trouble running SQL Server 2005. It recommends 512 megabytes or more. The or more is the important part here. It doesn't matter how much memory you have on a SQL Server. If you could double that, it would be even better. Okay, so always put as much memory as you can possibly afford or the machine will hold as a standard rule. Now, for standard and express editions, notice the requirement is 64 megs. Now, you will see out there published on uh, the express edition that you can get away with 32 megabytes and so forth. Again, don't try to do that with your life. Go ahead and give it enough memory. And again, notice the recommendation hasn't changed. 512 megabytes or more, and or more is the optimal phrase there. Now on the disk, this is not a huge deal for most people, but you do be, need to be aware that to load the SQL Server database components and make SQL Server function on your server, it's going to require somewhere between 95 and 300 megabytes of disk space. Now, a typical installation, according to Microsoft, requires about 250 megabytes. So that gives you an idea on kind of what you're looking at. However, if you're going to add analysis services, now we won't cover analysis services in this course, but this is basically data warehousing, data cubes, and so forth. That's going to require an additional 50 megabytes of your disk space. And if you're going to load reporting services, which people are really falling in love with, by the way, that's going to be two things. First of all, an additional 50 megabytes for the report server itself, and then an additional 30 megabytes for the report designer that you're going to use to build the reports. I will tell you, reporting services, if you haven't seen this, you need to take a look at it. This is one of the coolest reporting tools that I've seen in quite a while. Really like it. It's very simple, easy to use. Users absolutely love the thing. But this is not a reporting services course, so we'll move on. The display. This is real interesting, and you need to be aware of this. Uh, you obviously know you need a display, right? Your administrative tools are optimized for 1024 by 768 resolution. So if you're getting old like some of the rest of us are, and you tend to, to bump that resolution down sometimes, although I, I never go under 1024 by 768, you may have some screen utilization issues. Microsoft has built this for 1024 by 768 resolution, so just be aware of that. That generally is the hardware requirements. If you're, if you're not in violation of any of those, you should be good to go to install SQL Server. Just remember again, and watch for this in the real world. For the most part, the faster your processor, and of course you'll get into multiple processors later, but the faster the processor, the more memory you have, the better you're going to like SQL Server, the more efficient it's going to be, the faster it's going to run. One real quick general rule here that I've read in a number of documentation locations is that for the, a general rule for a single processor on SQL Server is if you have 100 concurrent users or less. Now, of course, your actual mileage may vary on and on and on, but for the most part, the general rule out there is if you have 100 or less concurrent users, you're probably going to be just fine with a single processor. Once you cross that 100 mark, you're getting real close to needing multiple processors, two or more processors in your SQL Server box. So those are the hardware requirements for installing SQL Server 2005.